The Vikings are releasing Dalvin Cook. They will save $9 million in cap space. In his last four seasons per game, Dalvin Cook has been RB3, 2, 8, and 11 in non-PPR. And per game, he's been RB2, 3, 11, and 14 per game in PPR. Meanwhile, Alexander Madison has scored 21.4 or more PPR fantasy points in four of the last six games that Dalvin Cook has missed, which is 2020 and 2021. Cook did not miss any games in 2022. Okay, Jamie, initial reaction. Let's talk about, well, you know what? Let's let's talk about Dalvin Cook and, and basically what he's meant to fantasy managers for the last four years. I mean, what an incredible um, fantasy career he's had. And hopefully we'll still have, you know, yeah. I mean, he's not retiring and, you know, hopefully he, he finds a, a destination that will still continue to allow him to play at a high level and, and give him the touches that he needs to be successful for fantasy managers. You know, I'm not sure that there's an ideal situation out there that's perfect. You know, Miami seems to be the most logical destination and we'll see if that happens. But um, look, he's been he's been great. You know, uh, you know, you, you had the unfortunate beginning of, you know, the ACL tear and then what happened you know, in his, in, in his comeback from that, just, you know, compensating with some hamstring injuries. But really since then, you know, despite some shoulder concerns, he's, he's been great, you know, per game basis, he's been amazing. Um, obviously you look at the numbers here, most scrimmage yards last four seasons. So I, I you know, he's, he's at that age where you got to be concerned. He's at, you know, a, a juncture of his career where clearly, you know, the team that has uh, fostered that career is now moving on from him. But I, I still think that if he ends up in the right spot, he can give you maybe one more year of, of quality production enough that he could still be maybe, uh, a low end starter, most likely though, will end up in that flex conversation. And Dave, uh, sorry, Jamie, you're not Dave. Jamie was referencing a graphic we had up the most scrimmage yards among running backs over the last four seasons. He was second. Dalvin Cook was second behind Derrick Henry. All right, let's turn our attention, Dave, to Alexander Madison. You know he has been so good when Dalvin Cook has been out. He's been one of the the you know favorite handcuffs every year because we know what he can do. He's been called a three down back. Uh, what do you think? Where are you going to rank Alexander Madison as of right now? I'm getting excited. This is like 48 hours after we talked on the podcast about not being too excited about Alexander Madison. And now I'm just, I'm getting excited about Alexander Madison kind of falling into the bear trap that I didn't want to fall into. I've got him as RB 15 third round pick toward the end of round three, but in that type of range, and it's based on volume. It, I don't think he's an explosive running back. I, I don't see him having a ton of huge runs. Um, he can avoid tackles and break tackles like the best of them. And he can handle short yardage touchdowns. I projected him on just like a minimal amount of work, less work than what Dalvin Cook got last year. And I still came out to 10 touchdowns on him. I think that he could end up being very, very good. This is an offense that does like to throw a lot. And yet last year when they did, Dalvin Cook averaged almost 18 touches per game. I think almost all of that is going to fall into Madison's lap as long as he doesn't stink. And as long as he doesn't stink, fantasy managers are going to call him pretty close to a must-start fantasy running back. And if he does stink, they'll call him Alexander Badison. Yes. Thank you. Jamie, where are you going to rank Alexander Badison? Dave has him 15th. Or around. He'll be around RB15. How about you? Uh, he'll be a little bit lower. Uh, I, I think he is a... Round four pick. I, I think, you know, you look at those receivers that should be available to you in round three, especially when the quarterbacks start to come off the board. He's going to be one of those guys that's at the start of the dead zone. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll probably get a little bit frustrated with him at some point during the season, like we were with Dalvin Cook last year. You know, so um, this is definitely an offense that has trended from featuring its run game to featuring its passing game with the coaching change that we saw last year. And we'll find out, you know, if Madison can handle that role and if he's going to be allowed to get that role. You know, are they going to just use him like they use Dalvin Cook? Or are they going to mix and match the running backs with the guys they have behind them? I think they got a steal in the seventh round with Dwayne McBride. I think he's going to be very successful, hopefully as a number two guy, if he's able to, you know, outperform Ty Chandler and Nwangnu and the guys that they have there. But I think that's going to be the case. So he's going to be the one that I'm, I'm going to probably be the most excited about as we get closer to training camp. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, look, Madison has been awesome in that role when he's gotten it um, again, most of it has come pre Kevin O'Connell. So we'll see what happens, you know, with, uh, with the coaching change from a year ago now featuring Madison, but clearly they, they, they've they made it clear that this is the guy they're going to go all in. I just don't want to overvalue him. And I, I just fear that that's going to be the case if he's going around three. Right, man. I, I got to tell you, Alexander Madison by any metric, has been one of the worst running backs in football, I'd say, over the last two years. 
He is doing almost nothing. His longest run last year was 15 yards on 74 carries. The year before that, he had two carries of more than 20 yards on 134 carries. Yards per carry has been terrible basically the last two seasons. But one thing I have noticed is that he does better when he gets a lot of work. So I'm wondering if he's really better than those metrics. How easy is it for a guy to get, you know, five carries a game, then six, then two, then something like that, and and to have good numbers? It might just be that he needs to get into a rhythm. Uh, we didn't see any of that last year, so I don't know. But we did see it in 2021, and he was better in those games than he was, you know, overall for the full season. Uh, so, you know, he's only 25 years old, or he's going to be 25 years old in June. And maybe he's better than those numbers. And if he is, then this was a guy that played like a first rounder, um, Dave, when when Cook was out. Yep. But I, I can't help but make the Mike Davis, Miles Gaskin comparisons because they were fourth round picks based on average draft position in 2021. And neither of them was even a top 40 running back per game. Uh, so I, I, Did those guys have the same kind of track record that Madison has. I, you know, I, I, Davis, say, I don't think does. And Gaskin, Gaskin was a projection more than anything else. I was very high on him that year. I didn't think that he would let us down. I didn't think there was anybody else in the Dolphins run game that would take work away from him. And he just blew it. He was awesome in the preseason. He just blew it in the regular season. But they both did, right? So, so Mike Davis going into that year, remember he filled in for McCaffrey the year before. Yeah, I remember being out on Davis, but in on gas. Okay, he was bad on a per carry basis, 3.9 yards per carry, which is like Madison. But um, overall, he was okay. He was better early in the year. Gaskin played 10 games in 2020, and he scored 13 or more PPR fantasy points in eight of them. So he was very productive for fantasy. And I think neither, this is important, neither of them went into the year with obvious competition, but both of them lost their jobs, basically, to... Savan Ahmed and I think Duke Johnson came in to Cordero Patterson right. in Atlanta. Uh, it's like we didn't see it coming, but they both were so bad that they lost their job, or at least their their, their grip on the job. You're right. I don't know. What, what do you think about those comparisons? I I think Madison is a more well. Like, I don't know if he's more physical than Mike Davis was, but I think even with his poor efficiency, he's probably at least as efficient maybe better as a tackle breaker than Mike Davis was certainly the year that Davis was in Atlanta. And I believe he's younger than Davis was when Davis was in Atlanta. And I don't remember how old Gaskin was. Well, Gaskin I just, was young. Dave, Davis was almost 30. Uh, right. I, I, I it was think easy to thing, get away from him. I think the thing that you, you look at is, are they going to feature Madison the way that they featured Dalvin Cook? And I just don't think that's the case. You know, I, I think that they must feel like their group is good enough that if Madison does fail. And the thing I think that we sort of overlook a little bit with Madison is almost every time he's had success, it's been against some of the worst run defenses in the league <laughs> when he's gotten those chances. You know, it was Detroit when Detroit was Detroit terrible. a couple times. It was right. Seattle that one time when Seattle was terrible. It's it's almost as if he's just fallen into these great situations. And so if the metrics aren't good <laughs> and it's just been a lot of production, is he going to a lot of a lot of volume, excuse me. Is he going to get that volume to be productive? And that's the scary part about it because is he going to be successful against some tough matchups? Now, granted, he's not going to be a prolific receiver. We haven't seen that from him. So that's something he has to prove. Uh, uh, we it, have seen that from him. I, in, in small sample sizes, you know, so do well, everything is small sample sizes. Yeah, I guess it's fair. Never cook but are, are they, are they going to trust him enough in that, in that role and give him those opportunities? So that's, that's my concern. Again, I, I think you got to love the scenario because he's proven to be successful when he's gotten those chances, but there are some things about him that you have to be worried about. And is this more of a financial thing or is this more of a talent thing when you look at the move that they make? Adam, may I? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Jamie's right on this one. Five career games with 20 or more carries. They've come against Seattle, Detroit, 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 and Seattle. <laughs> okay. Funny. It, it's a funny thing. Um, I, I happen to think that the NFC North run defenses aren't going to be shut down. Detroit should be good. Green Bay's got the talent to be good. Uh, Chicago added linebackers. I don't know about their defensive line. Those are six of his 14 games. I can give you his projected uh, strength of schedule. It's in the bottom half of the league. So if you're if you're worried about the matchups, yeah, he's going to have some tougher matchups. He's he's absolutely proven that he can be a good passing downs back, and I think it would be a departure from what Kevin O'Connell wants to start splitting up the running back workload 
just based on how much they had Madison last year, they still put a ton on Dalvin Cook's plate. So I, I, there, I feel there, like, they, I feel there like they want, guys, I'm sorry, though. Jamie. I feel like they want one guy to handle most of it to begin the year. Like that's their plan A. And plan B is if Madison stinks and he's not explosive and he can't get it done against tougher defenses, then I think they look to Ty Chandler or Dwayne McBride. Uh, that would be the order I would have them in as, as back as maybe they add somebody else before this preseason is over. But for now, I, I can't help but be excited, but it's based on volume, totally based on him getting a lot of work. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a question. What round is Madison worth drafting now? If you missed it, Dave said round three and around three, round four. I, literally I'm at 36 in my top. Okay. So would you rather have Madison or ETN? Oh, ETN. Easy. I have ETN a spot higher than Madison. Madison or Ken Walker? Madison. Madison for now. Okay, Madison or Calvin Ridley? Ridley. I believe I have Ridley higher. All right, we have a bold prediction about Ridley later. Yeah, I think to, to, what I think is complicated about Madison is I, I do wonder if the bad metrics are just because he, he barely plays, you know, and if, okay. it, if he could, because when he has gotten the work, well, the matchups have been good, but the numbers are a lot better. So I don't know. It'll, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, also, he's got he has eight career games with 15 or more touches. He's been below four yards per carry. This is strictly his carry numbers in well, two of those games. Everything else, it's been 4.1 or higher. Yeah, I think uh, he needs I think he needs the rhythm and the work. It's the it's rhythm and the rhyme. He's going to get it. <laughs> okay. gonna get also, I don't know if this means anything to you, but the Vikings were one of the luckiest teams in football last year. They went 13 and four. They were something like 11 and 0 in games decided by a touchdown or less or eight points or less record setting luck, basically, for the Vikings uh, in their 13 wins. Dalvin Cook averaged 17.2 carries per game in their four losses. He averaged 10.3 carries per game. I don't know if that will carry over, but they will lose more games this year. And that could mean even less work for Madison because the targets did not go up for Dalvin Cook. That's if that met if that stat holds cut carries over. 